Welcome to our lecture on Pesach, Experiencing the Paradox of God. At this particular time, as we experience the COVID virus and the pandemic around it, a lot of people are experiencing God in a new and different kind of way. One congregant wrote to me the following, I feel like the whole world should be trembling for the fear of God right now. Again, you don't have to take that necessarily in terms of God is getting us and this is a punishment from God. I don't know what it is. But in experiencing the power of nature, the power of one little virus to shut down a whole world, we are in some ways having a different experience of God, especially for those of us who sort of grew up in a sort of enchanted America where everything was nice and good and fine. All of a sudden to experience this upheaval, a shutdown of the whole country, a fear that a disease could be lurking somewhere and we could get it and someone could die. This is a new way of experiencing life and I would argue of experiencing God himself. Friday night in our Kabbalah Shabbat we have a, 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 an expression very similar to this. We talk about, you know, give, give God glory and all that and then we say, Chilumi panav kolaret. Tremble before him all the earth. Let the whole world tremble before God. And it is, isn't that in many ways what we're experiencing right now, right? That, that the whole world sort of humbled before this little virus, this, this invisible uh, force. We begin to tremble. It's a different experience of God. This idea of experiencing God in different ways is found in many places in the Haggadah. It's, it's all over the Haggadah. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> if you look right at the beginning of Maggit, we say, Right now, we are slaves. We still are slaves. Next year, we won't be. We, we experience God in different ways, in different periods of our history. In fact, one might interpret the, the Manishtana not as simply four discrete questions. Why, why is the Matzah different from other nights? Why is the Mora different from other nights? Why is the leaning different? But rather, how does this all fit together? You're telling me it's an evening of freedom, so then how come, so I understand we're leaning, but why are we eating the mara, which represents slavery? Which experience are we having? Can we have both in the same night? The rabbis say, Matchil Bignu, you should start with the bad part of the story, the slavery, and you should finish up with the good part, the, the exodus, other great things in our history. But what do we focus, what's the focus? What, how should we experience God on this night? Certainly, if there's any paragraph that expresses sort of the angst of Jewish history, it's Vahisha Amda, that God is the one who stood for us in all these generations. The covenant with God has stood for us in all these generations. The mitzvah that we do has stood for us in all these generations that not one, but everyone tries, so many nations, every generation, try to destroy us. And the Holy One, blessed be, saves us from their hands. That means that we've experienced God as sort of, oh no, the nations are going to destroy me. How do you experience God when you're feeling that way? Experience God is kind of harsh, judgmental. And then God saves us, and how do you experience God then? Oh, great joy, Purim, celebration. Matter of fact, in our Amida, as we begin the Amida, we try to get, figure out what's our stance vis-a-vis -vis God. And we start off with what? Melech Ozer Moshiach Magin. Three things. Ozer, he helps me. In other words, I, it doesn't, he doesn't take over. Moshiach means that he does it all. But helps means that I have my problems and together, God and I together, we're going to solve the problem. And Ozer, Magain, Magain means that he's protecting. Protecting sounds to me like a shield. It sounds to me like the arrows are still flying. How do you experience God when the arrows are flying, but the shield is up? Are you in awe of the experience? Or are you in love with God for holding up the shield? These are the challenges, and these are the, this is the par paradox of God. That on the one hand, He's the God of, 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 of awe and the God that we love at the same time. Now, when the Egyptians were experiencing the wrath of God in the splitting of the sea and the ten plagues, what were the Jews experiencing? So the Haggadah says, well, in Egypt there was great awe. He took us out of Egypt with great awe. Moragado. So the, the rabbis in the Haggadah, the Midrash says, that's Gilu Shina. It, we had a divine revelation of the divine Shina, divine presence. And you say to yourself, 
I don't remember that part of the story. I mean, at some point in the story, we, there were 10 plagues, and then God revealed himself to us? We're talking about, we're not talking about Mount Sinai. We're talking about in, in Egypt. What are we talking about? So, you know, different commentators. The Baruch Shamar says, this is, a very, this is a very clever midrash. Moragadol is really Oragadola. It's really the great light, that there was a great revelation at Mount Sinai. The Zohar says that the main awe of God is not awe, fear of punishment, but fear of how great God is compared to us. And I think that's what we're experiencing at this time. The Ritva says that Moshe, what do you mean? Where's the revelation? What do you mean? Chapter 12, when God spoke to Moses and Aaron saying, and he told us about Pesach, that's the revelation of God. God revealed himself to Moshe and Aaron. And then when they went with the, sitting, the splitting of the sea, everybody knows that at the splitting of the sea, they said, Zeke, they could see God. They said, that's it, it was palpable. You could, so to speak, you could, you could feel God right there. And in fact, the Mycenaeum HaGadah says that, that the word Le'inecha, that, that it's everything that God do, did for you in, your, in front of you, mean, it tells us that there, there must have been a revelation right in front of our eyes. Now, if we look, now that we've recognized that there was a revelation at, in, in Egypt, we will notice that when we say the famous words, the three Pesach, Matzah, and Mar, Rabbi Gamliel says you have to emphasize three things and explain them, that actually there's another mention there of the Gilu Shechina, that we experience God in revelation. Why do we eat the Matzah? Because there was no time for the dough to rise until God revealed himself. We, but by the time the dough rose, God had already revealed himself. There it is again, that in Egypt, God Reveals himself. What does that mean? How do the commentaries take it? One commentator from Morocco, Rabbi uh, Eliyahu ben Harush, he says, he says, there must have been, when they went out, there must have been a kind of a revelation. But not always do we experience God in, in, as, as, as the one who saves us. Sometimes you experience the wrath of God. In fact, Rabbi Lezer says that every plague had within it the wrath and the vengeance and the anger. He said four elements. Uh, Evra, Vizam, Tzara, Mishlach, uh, Mechiraim, anger, wrath, fury, trouble, sending of messengers of evil. So the plagues were, were all about uh, the wrath of God. So there was this wrath of God and then the revelation of God all taking place at the same time, at the same time. The Midrash, the Mechilta, another Midrash, bring out this idea in the, in the following way. See, at Mount Sinai, God says, I'm Lord your God. So the Midrash basically says, yeah, I mean, that's pretty obvious. You are the Lord my God. What, we, what is it saying? Because at, at, when the sea split, we experienced God as an Ishmael Chama. He was like a hero winning wars with armor. That's what God looked like to us at the splitting of the sea. He beat the Egyptians. But at Mount Sinai, and this is an anthropomorphism, God appeared to us as a zakim male rachamim, as an old man, so to speak, full of mercy. We experience God as two different things. So God says, Anochi Hashem Elokecha. I am Hashem, I am Elokecha. I am your God, the mercy, I am your judge. It's all one. As we say in the Shema, Shema Yisrael, Hashem, that's mercy. Elokeinu, he is our God, judge, that's harsh. Hashem, mercy, is everything. Zechad, it's all, it's all mercy. It's all mercy. That's the paradox. We have to live with it. One of my students asked, so can we do both at the same time? I don't know. We have that story of Rabbi Akiva. He always said, Gamzu Latova. He learned it from his Rebbe, Nachumish Gamzu. Whatever happened, something bad happened, he's experiencing the wrath of God. But he said it's for the good because he saw the good. He saw the Hashem inside the Elohim. He saw how it's all one. Or another Midrash, not the Mechilta, but the, the Midrash Seichel Tov on Bishalach says, Hashem Yishmael Chama, Hashem Shema. God, the merciful name of God, Chachvagamata, is a man of war. It sounds like a God of wrath. Hashem Shema. His name is mercy, and it's all one. He is the same God when it was the past and the future. At the end of days, it's all the same God. There's only one God. In fact, Ram says this is our whole relationship with God. What does a person do when he, when he thinks about God? He says, You think about God. You say, realize there's no end to God. God is infinite. And you love Him so much and you praise Him. 
and you start to long for God, when you start thinking about that, you suddenly jump back, and then you, you realize that you're nothing, and you're so small, and God is so big, and, 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 then, uh, and then you come to love God and, and also to fear God. So he speaks about first love and then fear. Is it, is it static? Does it, does, it, does it go back and forth? Is it, is it that first you experience love, then you experience fear, then you go back to love and fear? Or can, can it all come together? As we said with the Shema, is it with Nachum Mishkam, or Rabbi Akiva? Maybe it takes Rabbi Akiva to bring it together. Maybe it's a paradox that few can solve. Most people experience like we do. During the pandemic, experience God as wrath. After the pandemic, before the pandemic, we experience God of love. And we can't mix the two. But to be able to see the God of mercy within the God of wrath, that's the trick. That's really what's the big trick. You know, with Christians, it seems to be, from the outside, it seems like it's more of an emphasis on God of love. Not to deal so much with this paradox, but we as Jews were forced to deal with the paradox. Last night we had a meditation session from this Michael Brunham. He claimed that, that Rav Nachman of Breslov has a meditation theory, I think it relates to this, that he says, think of a moment of awe. Think of a moment when you're really in awe. Maybe you saw the Grand Canyon, you saw a beautiful mountaintop, you looked down from a mountain, you had awe, maybe the birth of a child, you had awe. Then think of a moment that you were loved. You experienced love, and you, you, someone loved you, and you loved them. And think about that. And then, think about a moment when you were very happy. Then go back and forth between the two. Well, what if we would take this and we would say, think about the greatness of God. Okay, the greatness of God. God is so great. And he, the, the planets, the, the way the body works, it's, it's just amazing. Think about the smallness of man, the human being. Think about that, how small we are. Think about how much we love God. Think about how much God loves you and go back and forth and see if we can create that dynamic in our mind where we contemplate, as the Ramam envisioned it, contemplate the greatness of God, the awe of God, the love of God, and, we, and somehow we have to make it all work together. In the Haggadah, we try to do it. And that's what the kids are asking. Manishtana, how could you have all these contradictory elements in the Seder? Which one is it? Make up your mind. Is it a Judaism of pessimism and of slavery and, uh, you know, it's fair design a yid, it's hard to be a Jew, uh, problems. Is it a Judaism of optimism and you know, Zionism and salvation and, and, and redemption? And, or is it both? Can it be both? And I think what we're saying to the children is it's not so simple. It's got to be both. You've got you to do both. And during these difficult times, we're going to have to do both. We're going to have to remember the God of mercy, the Hashem Shemot. It's the same Hashem who a few months ago, everything was going so well. And we got willing, a few months from now, things will be going well again. And it's the same God, it's the same experience. We experience God differently during different times. And the Haggadah says, try to embrace it all. It's all Hashem Shemo, Hashem Echad. There's one, one God. And yes, there's mercy. It's also harsh, but it also has to be mercy because God is also merciful. But it's harsh, but it has to be mercy. It's all together at the same time. That's the paradox. That's what we try to live with. And that's, that's our message for us during this pandemic. That's the message of, of Pesach. And that's the message we'll try to learn, say tonight, and treat, teach to our children and to, our, to everyone around us. God can be both a judge, awesome, beyond comprehension. And we can love Him too, this, just all at the same time. And hopefully, all this will be for the good. Thanks for joining us here today at the Anshay Sfar Bethel Emeth Congregation for a discussion of Pesach. Join us each week for a discussion of the holidays, Pesach, or a corona, corona, uh, coronavirus uh, series as well. And uh, thanks to Jason Lefkowitz, our producer. Thank you.